We all have like a voice inside ourselves that want to say something about this world or want the world to take notice. I think film is a wonderful way to express that. Um, and it's a way you can express that that can touch a lot of people and change how they see the world too. What you endure is who you are. And if you just accept and do nothing, then life goes on. But if you see it as a way for change, life doesn't have to be this unfair. It can't be better. Maybe not for me, I can't change the past, but I can certainly help somebody else in the future so they don't have to go through what I did. I knew of Patsy Mink's name you know, having grown up here, of course she was a name I knew. She was a politician, that's what I knew of her. I didn't know anything else. And it wasn't until she passed away in 2002, sadly, that I really became aware of her story. And I realized that she was just this trailblazer. I was the first woman of color, which is what I prefer people to remember. The first woman of color in the entire United States House of Representatives. There's something about her story that really speaks to me as an Asian American woman. And at the time, I think I was also sort of figuring out my own political identity and her brand of politics really spoke to me as well. She was an unapologetic liberal at a time when being a liberal was a word nobody wanted to use. Being that bold as a woman, as a Japanese American woman, it's just amazing. I was really impressed and inspired by her story. My goal is to represent Hawaii and the United States at the World Championships and win. With Winning Girl, it's saying that girls can play whatever sports they want. Here's this young girl who has this ambition to be an Olympic champion in two sports. That's a pretty big ambition. <laughs> they just think that girls are easy, girls are nothing. But I just read their faces and I think in my head, He's going down. <laughs> as soon as I started filming with her, she stopped competing against boys. Because <laughs> the thing is, when she was young, she had to compete against boys because there weren't as many girls in the sport. But I guess once you get to like the middle school age, there's, there, are all, there are wrestling teams for girls, and there's just a lot more opportunities to compete against girls, which is great. So she found people of her caliber she could compete against. So no longer was that a story about gender equality, which is what I thought it was going to be when I started. It ended up just being more of a sports story a story about an athlete on the rise. Usually when we see sports stories, they're already champions and we're looking at them as champions. You don't really see the story of the athlete going through the ranks and, and learning and failing and rising. And I think that's what Winning Girl ended up becoming. And I'm just gonna train 10 times as harder for the next year. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's a profession in which there's rejection constantly <laughs> and you have to be ready for that but I think at the end of the day you have to believe enough in your story and in yourself that you push through. When I became a mom my filmmaking had to change. It, it had to because I had two, two kids. I used to like with Patsy Mink I was there for every single shoot. I was there, I was asking the questions, I had to do everything and then by the time Winning Girl came around I became a mom there was a shoot I did and my daughter was still nursing at the time and I had my husband bring her to the shoot and I honestly was asking the questions with her nursing, <laughs> with a nursing apron over. And I remember the sound recorder saying, Kim, this is the first time I've ever seen a director nursing her child while asking, doing an interview. And I was like, that's a, you know, I, I took that as a badge of honor. When you're a working mom, you have to make compromises, but sometimes you just have to combine your work and your family too and be creative. So I'm currently in post-production on a film that's tentatively called Eye of the Water, The Unwritten Life of Sia Figuel. The moon will touch the heart of you against the sea, fearing the flap of birds, the sound the of waves came distance. like a little hurricane, or and perhaps the she that it was that did this to her, planted the lizard. She was the first Samoan writer to really shine a light on the lives of adolescent girls, who up until then really had no voice in the literature and imagery of the Pacific. 
everybody who wrote about the Pacific were, first of all, like European white males. And then we have Margaret Mead come in and she's telling a different story, but again, she's an outsider telling the stories of young Samoan girls. And Sia was the first to be a Samoan woman to tell that story. So I think she's pretty amazing, pretty much a pioneer in that way. This project has challenged me, I think, in ways the other ones haven't because of the length of it. Patsy Mink, it was four years. Winning Girl was five years. This one's five years and it's gonna be going on longer than that. And I don't even know how I would describe my relationship with Sia right now. Definitely not just filmmaker and protagonist. We're more than that. There are times on this project where I knew things that no one else knew about her. I still feel like my best work is ahead of me. I'm proud of my films, but I don't feel like my films have said everything I wanna say yet. I love my films to be films that shine a light on women and girls and women and girls of color. But I sometimes have thought that has hurt my career because my films are seen as niche. Patsy Mank with Winning Girl, they did really well in the Asian American Film Festival circuit, Women's Film Festival circuit, but they didn't really get to kind of the more mainstream festivals. They're seen as niche we don't value, or at least we didn't. I think we're starting to change, and it's, it's changing now, and those stories are becoming more valued. But I still wanna tell those stories. I'm not gonna not tell those stories because the industry is not interested. I'm just gonna keep telling them and tell them well enough and bold enough and loud enough that they have to listen. Mm -hmm.